Join Carol Davies on Global Voice Radio, the host of Only the Best for You. Be a change maker and unlock the secret to your best life. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my podcast, Only the Best for You, here on Global Voice Radio. My name is Carol Davies of the Passion Motivator Coaching Company. I'm so pleased each week to share with you the best information and speakers about how you can be a change maker to make the world and yourself the best you can be. Today, I'm reporting on Easy Techniques for Self-Empowerment, Part 1. Today, I'm going to cover limiting beliefs and a few of our inner core beliefs about ourselves. For example, self-empowerment is often walked by limiting beliefs. Our hopes and dreams, the buds in our trees, are affected by what we believe. In fact, what we think about every day is related to what we believe. For example, if I believe that I can be a successful business person, then I think about ways I can become a successful business person, such as looking for customers or thinking about where to sell my products. These beliefs come from and are affected by our history and life experiences, our roots. If I see successful business people in my community and I was encouraged to pursue independent activities when I was younger, I may be more inclined to believe I can be a successful business person. My daily thoughts about what I can do or be affect my activities or the experiences that I may have. If I think I can be a successful business person, I will pursue activities that can help me be a successful business person, such as uh, going to networking events, uh, making a business plan, many, many positive things like that. Also, our beliefs can be limited when we think about our goals because other thoughts can come to our mind that make us doubt ourselves or feel hopeless. And these can be referred to as limiting beliefs. A limiting belief is a belief that a person has that makes him or her doubt what they can do or be. It can come from making an incorrect conclusion about something in life. For example, a person may have the limiting belief that he or she is not smart enough to succeed in business and therefore decides not to try. If he or she has failed before in business, they might have the limiting belief that they will fail again and may decide not to try again. However, Beliefs are simply a way of thinking that we have grown accustomed to, thought habits or patterns, and therefore they can be changed. It's important to know what you believe and understand what beliefs are limiting you or holding you back. Then you can start to transform these limiting beliefs into constructive, supportive habits and beliefs. Another way you can think about limiting beliefs is that they also come in the form of excuses, negative thoughts, worries, justifications, fear, etc. At first, it may be hard to recognize our limiting beliefs, and we may have trouble realizing that they are not truths. We can explore our limiting beliefs by asking ourselves a few questions. What negative thoughts come into my head when I think about my goals? What unnecessary assumptions do I make about achieving my goals? Here are some common limiting beliefs. Hopelessness. For example, my goal will never be reached under any circumstance. And hopeless in social situations. So how can I get someone to buy a product? It'll never work. I'll never succeed selling products. 
I'm no good at, and you can fill in here what you're in business for. Or another one is, there's no point in trying. Helplessness. My goal can be achieved, but I lack the ability to achieve it. Why does this always happen to me? This is a man's world. I always get it wrong. Another limiting belief is worthlessness. I don't deserve to achieve this goal because I'm not good enough. I'm not confident in my abilities to be a successful business person. I'm worthless. When I talk, people get bored. Limiting beliefs create an inaccurate picture of what is really going on in our lives. And this can lead to flawed, inaccurate thinking that life events are unchangeable. While some life events are indeed out of our control, we have more power over our thoughts and experience than we often realize. Here are some different flawed thinking patterns. Self-blame. Here is an inaccurate thought. Because I forgot to get all of my supplies today, I'm a bad person. Here's a more accurate self thought. I forgot my supplies, but I can understand why that happened. So it happens less in the future. Another flawed thinking pattern is irreversibility. The inaccurate self says, because I missed the deadline, there will never be another opportunity. The accurate self thought is, even if I miss this chance, I can continue to search for another opportunity. Another flawed thinking pattern is overgeneralization. The inaccurate self thought is, this person was mean to me, therefore nobody likes me. The accurate self thought is, that person is a gift to help me learn or understand something. Those who challenge us can be our greatest teachers. Another one is black and white thinking. For example, the inaccurate self thinks, my life is worthless without my husband. The accurate self thinks, while my husband is a good man, he does not define my worth. And another big flawed thinking pattern is personalization. The inaccurate self thinks, my mother-in-law is mad at me because she hates me. The accurate self thinks, my mother-in-law may be upset for many reasons that I'm not aware of, like her poor health. And another flawed thinking pattern is overreacting. The inaccurate self thinks, I forgot to order enough boxes from the distributor and now my business will fail. The accurate self thinks, because I forgot the order today, does not mean my business will fail. I will order them tomorrow. Sometimes it's easy to reframe our beliefs so that they help us reach our goals. And sometimes it's more difficult. Reframing is very important when we're trying to overcome limiting beliefs. Here are some guidelines to help you reframe your belief. Concentrate on only one limiting belief at a time. Ask yourself, why do I have this limiting belief? Where did this limiting belief come from? And since when have I had this limiting belief? Ask yourself, what if I didn't believe this? Start looking for evidence that this limiting belief is not really true. For example, 
I do have some good qualities. I can learn new things. I am a nice person. Reframing is really about restating things in a positive manner. You can also look to see that the limiting belief is not accurate. So start thinking, what would I like the belief to be? How can I reframe this belief so that it is positive? Are there other people that I know who hold the opposite belief? How does that work for them? Could that work for me? For example, here are some examples of some reframed beliefs. There is always a way if I'm committed. There are no failures, only outcomes. As long as I learn something, I'm succeeding. I find great joy in little things, a smile, a flower. I give more of myself to others than anyone expects. If I'm confused, I'm about to learn something. This is a favorite saying of um, the very esteemed Tony Robbins. I attended a big seminar of his several years ago, and he said, uh, participants, if they say, I'm confused, he said, you're going to make a breakthrough. Well, that was something I've never forgot. So as you're fo uh, reviewing your limiting beliefs, focus on how it feels when you say these limiting beliefs. Do they feel happy and strong uh, when you say the reframe belief, or do you still feel doubt? It's important to feel confident in your reframed beliefs. From this place of deep understanding of where a limiting belief comes from, a good reframe can be met. Now, another way that we can change the way we think is to have the idea of an intention. We have the capacity to change how we experience our environment and we can change this at any time. So a very powerful type of thought of is an intention. What we desire and intend is what we become. An intention is a directed piece of thought that contains the seed of what we aim to create. When you have an intention, you create a will to be a certain way or do a certain thing. And from this will comes action. An intention can be the anchor for future positive thoughts and behaviors. An intention is a statement expressing an action to reach a desired purpose or goal. So for creating an intention, you should have a strong positive feeling or emotion that accompanies the intention. An intention works best if it is said in a short and powerful manner. An intention also paired with a mental or visual image of your desired purpose or goal can have more power. Here's an example of an intention. I am practicing patience and will work hard to achieve my goals. An image could be myself as a smiling, successful businesswoman counting profits from the week. While an intention may start as a statement, you think or say out loud, it can develop into something that you experience or become. Once you create this thought and are willing to share it with yourself and others, it can then grow and expand as part of your life. When we create an intention, <coughs> excuse me, we often, almost immediately, face our limiting beliefs. We often feel justified in our conclusions, but more commonly, these beliefs hold us back and create more obstacles 
than actually exist. It's important then to understand some of the core beliefs that we hold and see how we can create intentions to become stronger, more successful individuals. So we have many inner examinations of our belief systems. There are six core beliefs that relate to our success and growth. Self-responsibility, self-esteem, trust in a higher purpose, positive attitude, continual growth through life, and owning your power. Today, I'm going to concentrate on self-responsibility and self-esteem. And in the next episode, we'll talk about trust in a higher purpose, positive attitude, continual growth through life, and owning your power. Some of these concepts can be difficult to translate or talk about. It's easier if you do it very, very simply. And these are only reflections of where we see ourselves now. It's not where we may see ourselves in the future. And with time, things can change for the better. Now I'd like to concentrate on self-responsibility. Self-responsibility refers to the belief that we have control over our thoughts and actions. It refers to the idea that we have the ability to choose our response to what we experience in the world. For example, when misfortune happens, what do we think? Do we think it is because of our bad luck or because of something that someone else did? If we can think about events in this way, we often see ourselves as victims of the world or other people. If we focus on ourselves as victims, it can be difficult to change because we may feel hopeless, as if we don't have control over our lives. Now, examine how you feel when you don't see yourself as a victim of your circumstances. For example, Say someone has stolen money from your home. A different response may be, I am angry that this has happened. Now, what can I learn from this situation and find a way forward? Rather than say, oh, I'm so stupid, I left that window open, or I should have changed the locks. Some common limiting beliefs are, I'm a victim of forces beyond my control. I am helpless. I don't know how to deal with difficult things. I stay confused, so I don't have to take responsibility for my life. I can't change my life. I've got bad karma. It's better if someone else takes care of me. Now, how do we feel if we say these limiting beliefs? How can we reframe these limiting beliefs? so that we feel stronger and more positive about the future. For example, while what has happened is out of my control, I can choose how I respond in the future. I can learn from difficult experiences to make my life better. I can take control of my thoughts and actions. So how would having this belief, self-responsibility, be helpful for your business? How would it be helpful in your life? Think about this for a few minutes. Try to create an intention around self-responsibility. It should be a statement that creates a strong positive emotion in you. If you're having difficulty coming up with an intention, try to think of times when you felt in control of things. 
You should choose an intention that has meaning for you. Say it out loud and reflect on how that makes you feel. For example, I have the power to change my life. Another example, I take responsibility for my life. Another intention, I am willing to take control of my life. Another intention, I will choose beliefs that serve me. Or, I will learn from all of my life experiences. This concept of taking responsibility for your life is very, very important to develop in yourself. It helps in developing some of the core beliefs I talked about before. Now I'm going to talk about self-esteem as one of your core beliefs. Self-esteem is related to how you think about yourself and the belief that you have of your own worth. This is about your willingness to believe in yourself. For example, do you believe that you have what it takes to be a successful business person? Do you feel worthy of being treated with respect, care, and love? It is important to realize that your own worth as you begin any new endeavor. This gives you confidence and allows you to make it through difficult times. Oftentimes, we are faced with many criticisms from others about our intelligence, our looks, or our abilities. Some of us may never have heard positive things about ourselves. And these criticisms can shape how we think about ourselves. It's important to create your own positive sense of self. So we don't have to rely on others to feel valuable or strong. This idea may be difficult as you may not have thought of yourself in this way before. Give it a try. For example, instead of thinking to yourself, I'm not good enough, another way to look at this could be, I have some good qualities and the more I learn, the better I get. Imagine yourself having self-esteem in areas where you've not had any success in the past. Do you understand the meaning of self-esteem? What limiting beliefs come up when you consider that idea? Some common limiting beliefs I've come across are, I can't, I'm stupid, there's something wrong with me, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, I'm not worthy, I don't accept myself. How do we feel when we say these limiting beliefs? For myself, it makes me feel very sad and wanting to withdraw into myself, having very little confidence. Is that you too? So what are some ways to reframe these limiting beliefs? For example, you could say, I accept myself as I am. I am capable of doing many different things. I am as deserving as others to have prosperity. So how would having these positive beliefs be helpful for your business? How would these helpful beliefs make your life even better? It's important that you choose intentions that suit you as an individual and not something that somebody has said or written, if it doesn't resonate with you. Make sure it has meaning, say it out loud, and reflect on how that makes you feel. Write them down. I often have intentions like this, and I put them on 
small piece of paper and put them near my computer or near a mirror in the bathroom or places where I'll see it. Sometimes other people call these things uh, affirmations as well. It's much the same thing. For example, I like to write down, I appreciate my many good qualities. I accept myself as a lovable person. I know that I'm an intelligent person. And I remind myself every day that I am worthy of a good life. So these are just some ways that you can get a start on different ways to empower yourself. And next week, I'm going to continue on with uh, more tips to give you. So I really hope that you are able to take on board some of the things that I've shared with you today. And that you will have some great take excuse me, takeaways. If you want further information or want to talk about more ideas with me, contact me through my website at www.thepassionmotivator.com or by email at coachcaroldavies at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. We could have a quick 20 minute discovery session if you like. Remember, you can change your life at any time and become the success you were meant to be. I look forward to connecting with you next week. Bye now. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern for only the best for you with Carol Davies on Global Voice Radio.